all smiles amid a firm handshake in this significant moment. For decades, the nations these two leaders represent held nothing but hostility towards each other. Yesterday, after making the mere 90-mile journey after nearly 90 years, Barack Obama has become the first U.S. president to step onto Cuban soil. This is a historic visit, and it's a historic opportunity to engage directly with the Cuban people and to forge new agreements and commercial deals, to build new ties between our two peoples, uh, and for me to lay out my vision for a future that's brighter than our past. The weather may not have been on his side since he arrived, but it appeared the Cuban crowds certainly were. Scenes like this would have been unthinkable over the decades. Relations between them were virtually frozen since 1959, after Cuba's communist revolution overthrew a pro-US government, followed by the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. Now relations have thawed after Obama and Castro agreed to end the hostilities. This afternoon, the president laid a wreath at the memorial to one of the country's independence heroes before meeting with a Cuban leader. On the table, political and in particular the US trade embargo, which for decades has made it illegal for US companies to do business with the small island. We hope for a better life that both countries can finally understand each other and the blockade will end. Cuba's human rights is also on the agenda. Hours before he touched down, members of a dissident group, Ladies in White, campaigning for the release of political prisoners, were arrested during their weekly protest. The president is due to meet them tomorrow. Tonight, the two men will talk over dinner. Critics from both sides say little will be achieved. Whatever the outcome, the visit does mark the beginning of the end of a standoff between the nations. Sangeeta Kandola, 5 News.